Welcome back from the break, ladies and gentlemen. We are getting underway with our third map. Of course, we've got a change of faces with myself and Raven swapping in for uh, Dev and that French bloke. Well, I don't know what he's going for. He's got a <laughs> scarf or a turtleneck. I really can't figure it out. Vast, how have you felt about the uh, the first two matches? It, it seemed... Uh, no, it's, it, it kind of was surprising that Direwolves were able to uh, get in front by so much. Um, I mean, it did surprise me, Matic, because I am very smart oh, and predicted Direwolves to win. <laughs> hey, so, so did um... I. So did I, mate. You're, 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 you're kind of two, two of the same with me, mate. We've got the big brain. But, Actually, you know... I think we have been predicting the same stuff. Yeah. I don't know. There's something kind of going going on there. Something in the air. No, but I'm, I don't know. I've been enjoying the games. I think Direwolves had a really good showing, um, and it's good. No, it's good to see, you know, when teams are kind of going in a rut, it's good to see kind of the progress, you know, um, for ourselves, I guess. Yep. Yeah, well, uh, one team that's been in a rut but started to uh, progress a little bit more so, especially on the back of their roster changes as Chiefs. Uh, the recent roster change giving us the most, but of course, they're coming up against Wildcard. This is sure to be an absolute smacking game, or at least one would hope so, Raven. Yeah, no, look, I'm actually really excited for this because obviously the Chiefs have presented some pretty significant positive form over the last couple of weeks. Yep. Uh, they had a massive victory over Elevate on Chalet. And of course, even at OCN, they've uh, yeah, presented some new strengths as well. Uh, obviously, Ethan being that new player they've brought in to replace, can't remember what the other guy's name was, but <laughs> either way, Ethan's presented uh, as a, a really strong new addition. Pretty forgettable, uh, pretty forgettable name, that's for sure. But uh, speaking of, uh, <laughs> do you want to give us some insight on your on your uh, your fallen brethren here? It's uh, only only departed f what a couple of weeks ago. What what can you tell us about this roster? Yeah, I mean, they've had a really good start, and I mean, like it, in stage one and stage two, I I've talked about it before, but a big issue of Chiefs has always been not starting off strong. Whereas this season, we actually are seeing them start off really strong. So I think that is in itself really good kind of early signs to show maybe how they're going to progress throughout stage three. Yeah, and uh, Wildcard have shown some uh, promising signs, which of course are the opponents for today's matchup, Raven. But I guess last week was not uh, not a great start in terms of Apex South. 7-1 absolute smacking from Knights. Yeah, not the greatest start to Apex South, but they did have a really good win against Order in OCN. That was actually a 7-2 on Chalet. So there are some glimpses there. And as there should be, I mean, I feel like I've said it a lot throughout the year. It's not like Wildcard all of a sudden have just like shed a lot of players. Mm. I actually have a lot of individually really good players on their team. It's just yeah. there's something that hasn't gelled or clicked there with them yet. And it continuously just feels like it could be a matter of time where they just start to really get on top of whatever the issue is and we'll start to see a lot more brilliance coming out of this roster and you know looking through the player names geo vincia even milo you know quite a rising star at the moment mm. in os they all can individually pop off for sure but just i don't know there's just something there that's holding this roster back at the moment is uh time going to tell for brilliance or a roster change here vast what's what's your take um, my take is it depends if they're doing the right thing, if they're doing mm -hmm. the right thing and um, kind of working on the basics and, you know, trusting the process a bit, yep. you know, time will tell, but it, it depends how they have their system set up to, for, you know, learning and improvement and whether the players will have patience because it is stage three. Um, and, you know, maybe some of the players might start running out of a bit of patience, um, which I, I hope they don't because yep. um, you know there's definitely yeah uh, there's definitely promise and I think that um, they have the right mentality from kind of Vinci's um, interview the other night. It seemed like they mm. had the right mentality going to the season. Um, yeah, maybe it didn't go their way, but um, yeah, I still think that there's definitely a lot of promise. Yeah, I guess uh, 2022 will probably start to unfold more information around uh, the wildcard roster, but we still have this entire stage for them to pick their act up and to show us what they're truly made of. Let's go to the veto uh, system here, Raven, and I'll let you just take it away straight away. We're going to bank, <sighs> yes. thank the Lord. <laughs> this is an exciting one. I think this has the uh, this has the prospect to to really be quite a rager. 
Yes! Oh, I'm so excited to see some bank played. Um, I personally haven't cast it yet this stage. Uh, I always really liked it kind of back in the map pool back in the day. Yep. Even though there were some, you know, kind of little issues with it. Uh, I, I'm happy to see it back. Uh, look, I'm excited to see how this plays out. Um, mm. It was actually played uh, Chiefs and Wildcard in OCN last week, if I'm not wrong. Um, Chiefs coming out top on that one. So mm. I, I feel like we're going to see a repeat, but I'm excited to see it. <laughs> Vast. Yeah, I mean, just look at the videos as well. It's really interesting that Chiefs um, were willing to let Cafe um, go through to the end. And I mean, it's even int more interesting seeing Wildcard ban the Cafe and take them to bank. Because I would consider Cafe one of, um, I wouldn't necessarily say Chiefs weaker maps, but it's a map they don't really, they're not com that confident on. Um, so, I mean, that's really interesting. Um, obviously, yeah, these guys did play Bank the other day, so mm -hmm. we're probably going to see Wildcard, um, you know, just trying to, um, I guess, fix a lot of mistakes that went wrong and, like, just really try to adapt to Chiefs. And I guess that kind of maybe makes them the favorite in a sense because, mm. I mean, Chiefs kind of were quite dominant on the map, so what would Chiefs really need to change that much for mm. this game? Guess that's the question, Raven. Do Chiefs need to change anything heading into this one? That's always a tough decision, right? Because uh, to vast point, you know, like when you have such a dominant victory, it's certainly a mindset of, well, it worked really well last mm. time, so you kind of just do the same thing again, right? But that's not always that good either, because if Wildcard really put in the prep time, um, you know, they could identify a lot of the things that went wrong, or they could identify certain patterns that the Chiefs were constantly doing that they can now counter. Yeah. So, yeah, it is always a tricky thing to manage. I mean, what I would say is, if it's working, don't change it. But obviously, if you figure out early that Wildcard is staying in the county, well, then start to really, you have to adapt to that. And I guess that's the beauty of Siege, right? Is if you realize that your opponents kind of have your number, you really have to adapt on the fly. And that's where you start to find out what the great teams are. Yeah, Vas, I'll, uh, I'll come to you here because I'd be curious to get your thoughts on this one. Do you have any win conditions for either Wildcard or Chiefs here? For Chiefs, um, I don't really have a win condition, kind of. It's more so uh, depends on kind of how Wildcard play. For Wildcard's win conditions, I think trying to make Chiefs a lot more uncomfortable. When they played the other day, they, they didn't really do much to make Chiefs uncomfortable. And when Chiefs are really mm -hmm. comfortable, that's when they play their best. Um, yeah. They're able to think clearly, make the right adaptions. But when you put the pressure on them, when you make them uncomfortable, then, you know, maybe they might slip up a bit there. I think as well, I want to see Wildcard carry on their really fast, explosive entry that they were doing on Chalet against Order. I think mm -hmm. that was perfect. They had the pre-placed drones. They were isolating players and they were just taking it really quick. And I think when you're versing someone like Worthy, that is a really <laughs> aggressive roamer. Worthy is not going to waste time and fall back to site and let you yeah. have the map control. He's going to fight. He's going to peek. Um, so if Wildcard just kind of stall and not clear Worthy, I think that's the lost condition. If they're quick on their entry, use their pre-placed drones efficiently, yeah. um, I think that would be a better win condition for them. Okay, interesting. Raven, uh, quick final predictions before we get into this one. Yeah, look, I'm still feeling Chiefs. I think it's really hard to predict against them given the form they've presented. Um, but I guess to echo Vast Point a little bit, uh, something that Wildcard have always struggled with in the past and even throughout the year is just being a bit slow and maybe indecisive. So I kind of agree. If Wildcard want to find an in, they've just got to be a bit more explosive and in particular mm -hmm. with those entries. Um, but I guess to wrap it up, still predicting Chiefs. Yeah, seems like we're uh, kind of a Chiefs camp at the moment. We'll wait and see what happens in this server. That's where it really unfolds, of course. Taking us through all of the action, Dev and Guz. Take it away, boys. I always love taking it away from you, Rob. Let's get into this game, Guz. It is Bank. It's my first time casting Bank. Not yours, though, because you actually casted Bank when both of these two teams played each other back in OCN. So this is a bit of a rematch. Yeah, the only time that Os has tested Bank so far. Um, so heading into this matchup, we do have a little bit to work off, but who knows? I think there's still a lot of unexplored strategy on this particular map. Mm. Oh, yes, I'm really keen. Look, I'm a bit of a banked fiend myself. I'm really eager to see how these map changes do come through. Now, it has seen a little bit of light in various regions across the world, but these two teams are the only Os ones to have played it yet. Now we're going to get straight into this rematch. Wildcard have so much to prove. 
and Chiefs have had the first strong start to the season or the stage that they have had all year. Definitely a lot of expectation on those guys as we dig into this up band. So already off the bat here, something interesting that I thought might have happened is Wildcard would take the Jackal off the board. Last time they played in that OS matchup, particularly the Chiefs used the Jackal on Ethan so effectively. They got map control really, really quickly, particularly on basement attacks, and were able to really set up groundwork for the rest of the round. Wildcard won't respond. They'll just do the typical Thatcher ban. Uh, Pulse, that is a pretty decent target ban from the Chiefs. I do vividly remember Geo from Wildcard on the defense playing particularly basement in that gold vault, watching the default plant like we've seen um, in older iterations of Bank as well. So good target ban there from the Chiefs. Vault to round things off. Again, being such an expansive map, those black eye cameras can be placed around um, and can basically go undetected by the attack. So that's my thoughts on the ban phase, but I wouldn't say anything is too groundbreaking or too revolutionary in that department. Yeah, I guess the only real difference here is just a couple of diversions compared to how these guys banned it last time. Last time we saw a clash ban, if I'm not wrong, from Wildcard, which is unusual. Usually they love getting rid of that Valk. And Chiefs got rid of the Flores and the Mirror. So I guess this does leave Mirror in. We'll likely see her downstairs, maybe for some open area holds. And in fact, the six pick comes through off of the Kaid, perhaps baiting out that this is a basement bomb site, And instead, Wildcard take us down to Teller's archives. Yeah, the mirror selection on this occasion for me would suggest we'll see an extension in towards that open area position. And Geo, I mean, already shotgunning that rotate to set up there. Just trying to, I guess, increase the footprint of the defense horizontally. I'm not sure how expansive they'll get up above. I do vividly remember when they did take each other on last time, there wasn't a whole lot of vertical play that took place, particularly from the, the defense itself wanting to hold above. Instead, it was more so just naturally trying to expand um, their presence outside of the map to just completely dodge um, that vertical being established. But I mean, on this occasion, Wildcard are setting up above. A mirror on long desk facing into Janitor will make that a little bit more precarious to hold. Um, Aligned to side as well in towards CEO means that that square entry as well will be quite tricky. So I am keen to see on the flip side how the Chiefs try to approach this side, right? Do they go above and contest these square angles? Do they go from lobby, for example? We saw them do that in their last matchup. Or do they go straight open area? That's the one thing about Bank being so large. There are a lot of different um, ways that the attack could approach this objective. So if you haven't watched much of the bank rework, couple of changes, perhaps you didn't watch a lot of bank back in the day. Hopefully this is fresh for you no matter what. But also for these teams, not so fresh. They did play this just recently in Apex South. Lovely line of sight. They're opened by Worthy's Selmers. You can now follow that Kanto angle all the way up from this rappel. Another yep. thing to note is we didn't really touch on this yet, but hey, Ethan, right? MVP back in the day at Six Masters, one of the best players in OS, if not the best, back when he played for Wildcard, playing against his former team right now. Yeah, a little bit of a different roster to what it was when he departed, but no doubt, definitely a rivalry still there. And like I mentioned earlier, he was predominantly playing the Jackal in the last matchup, but the Chiefs not elected to bring it in round number one. Instead, Ethan on the upside down repel inside of the lobby, and this is something we did see in that last matchup. In fact, last time, I believe they double upside down repel inside of lobby to try and take control of this side of the map. So Wildcard should be ready and waiting for that. It seems like Moloska is aware that there are a couple of players pushing that position. For the most part, the Chiefs haven't really gained much of a foothold inside of the map to pressure these defenders, particularly those above. Good. Legion's made his way inside now to stock very wide roam here from the defense. And God Legion is on the front line. Pat's taken a heck of a lot of damage through that vertical plate. C4 pre-ripped. Oh, almost the opening there for God. A minute left and time's ticking away, but God Legion does eventually secure that opening pick. Vinny goes down. And Chiefs have a lot of map control for it. Moloska really low now, playing a pretty critical position on the main stairs. The line of sight through those footholds in towards Tellers could prove to be quite important. Digital, meanwhile, the vert player for the Chiefs, establishing said vert up above, lines of sight down below in towards the objective could prove to be quite dangerous. He does as well have two frag grenades still available. In fact, there's a lot of frag grenades and utility still available for the Chiefs. Oh. 25 seconds to work with, but the defense from Diablo finds those picks. Ethan, though, sends it deep, manages to find one there onto Emo Rin, but still under pressure. 
plant being forced down. Ethan's got a cover, tries to go for the wall bang, but Geo gets him right on back. And now Pat can take that defuse planter out of the server. God Legion found the opener. He's going to have to close it as well. Caught in the crossfire, not much to do here. And Wildcard start their campaign through this match with a strong opening round here on Bank. Wildcard in that round, at least in my opinion, able to win out the vert battles. They not only held on um, in terms of their setup horizontally to avoid some of the vert that was being established by the likes of Digital, but they were able to win those ones. Critically up above, through the metal bars, that can be really, really tough and really, really challenging to win out those engagements, particularly when you're down below. Um, can be really hard to hit those heads up above, but they managed to pull it off. So I don't know if that was more so a misplay there from, from the Chiefs. Maybe the vert could have been a little bit quicker, a little bit snappier in finding those picks. Not too sure, but either way, Wildcard did a great job in holding Attack on, and I think and the added bonus bar. of them going to Talos first means that arguably they've gotten one of, quote-unquote, the weaker sides out of the way. All four, I would argue, are pretty viable at the moment, but Basement typically would be the site you first go to, and with um, the Kayid bait in the last round, they've done a really good job in sort of duking the Chiefs in that regard. It always puts a little bit more pressure onto the attackers in that prep phase, right? Because usually you see the Kayid in the... the the op pick reveal phase, you're like, okay, well, they're going to be that basement site. And if, in fact, that info was a bait, then you've got to spend those prep phase drones yeah, really getting that information on where that site actually is. This round almost as confusing, in my opinion. Now, the castle was hidden. A mirror was teased out, suggesting that Wildcard was going to go for a complete turtle strategy. Everyone on site just really leveraging a, a lot of the, the anchor positions. But instead, it is quite the opposite. We have some hatch secured by the Kaid Claws, but we've also got this castle, your mozzie and your vigil. Really prevalent roaming operators. Yeah, definitely a measured setup here from Wildcard. They've elected to open some hatches, but as you mentioned, reinforce others with Electro Claws. So there's some sort of theory behind this. You will anticipate that Wildcard will try and hold up above as long as possible, uh, sync up that time and that even some utility from the Chiefs, but then be willing to fall back down towards the site and then lean on the likes of Pat with those smoke canisters. Geo and Milo both also have a nitro cell to work with for plant denial. So I'm liking this confidence and this aggression from Wildcard. If they can pull off this round with an extension with the likes of Vinny on the roam as well, that will instill this roster with so much confidence. And that is the factor, uh, or that is a factor that I think Wildcard have sometimes been lacking this year. They just haven't quite had the confidence to back themselves for these sorts of plays. So this is a really critical round for them to show the Chiefs what they're made of. No doubt Wildcard have had a rough start to stage three. They lost their opening APAC South game 7-1 tonight. They also lost their OCN games up until they played Order. They had a fantastic match, 7 2 them. But the last time Wildcard played Chiefs on this map, Ethan popped off. 10 kills and 4 deaths. Worthy also not far behind. Both of them really prominent players. We're just seeing the Chiefs as a unit really start to circle. It's no individual player stepping up. This is a well tuned machine. Upstairs control now has been obtained by the Chiefs, but has taken them two minutes to achieve such feat, leaving one left for the setup and for that eventual execute to come through. Is now it looks just, like the Chiefs... Is so this just going to be like year one bank, like trying to plant with smoke denial? Well, <laughs> oh, yeah, outside of the extension, which honestly didn't have the, that much bearing on the time use of the Chiefs, it is really going to be that way. Now, Pat, deep inside lockers, he can play the smoke canisters. He still has three left with 35 seconds remaining. That is a lot of time he can burn. The oh, Chiefs will no. likely be forced to go deep, but with Ethan dropped off the board, this execute gets a lot harder. That it does, and Pat is just in such a prime position. Three gas canisters, I mean, he couldn't possibly use all of them. With the time remaining, no way Fish is getting that plant down. Chiefs have no choice but to go deep. They have to go for broke. There is no chance they can make this passive plant work. What is Fish Fisher guy downs to the smoke. And Chiefs, it looks like all hope may be lost. Worthy the last man standing. It's a knife lawless round for Wildcard, making two on the trot. And that was another round, honestly, won by Wildcard, in my opinion, more so than it was lost by the Chiefs. 
the Rome, whilst they didn't necessarily put that much pressure, wild card that was on the attack, they did enough to drain down time. Um, they did some good work and they forced the Chiefs quite late into that round, about 45 seconds to go to set up inside of server room, try and go for that year one as you explained it, default plant. But Pat was ready and waiting. He saved his utility for the perfect amount of time. When there was about 35 seconds left, I was like, Chiefs, you know, you got to get a bit of a ball rolling here. You're probably going to have to send it deep. They didn't quite take the cube when they probably had a small win of opportunity to do that. By that stage, Fisho was low. Um, I probably critiqued him a little bit too harshly there, sitting inside of that uh, smoke babe. Honestly, even if he tried to send it through and get a plant where it would have been a bit safer, probably would have died either way. So it was just a fortunate position that the Chiefs found themselves in and another really well played round by Wildcard. Chiefs definitely feeling the pressure right now. Historically, Chiefs has been a team that has flourished in their National League, OCN. They've won back-to-back -back championships there, but Apex out has been a different story. Stage one, they made it to the playoffs, but fell to really vicious matches, just barely falling to Fnatic and then barely that falling to Cyclops, arguably one of the strongest teams in that bracket. Five seconds and now stage two, stage three, Attack Chiefs have just really down. struggled to find their feet in Apex South League. And of course, Apex South is the league that gets you the SI points once you Move on forward, you play the playoffs. As long as you can win some games in the playoffs, you get some SI points. If you can go the, all the way through that bracket, you'll make it to the major. That's the next step that Chiefs have been wanting to take. And at the moment, Wildcard is doing a damn good job of standing in their way. Yeah, that is an interesting point you bring up because uh, to the best of my knowledge, neither of these teams can realistically... I, I, I think even if... Oh. Oh. Oscar taken down, good shot by Gold Legion. I think if either of these teams win the major, they still basically are like a 0.05% chance of actually going to SI, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but it's something similar to that effect. I mean, so, at, at least through points, right? There's always the yeah, open, open calls. calls. Of course, yeah, very good point. Um, but I do think the greater battle at play here is, as you mentioned, the Chiefs, they really want to go to a major, get that international experience. Ethan is the only player on the roster that has that. Wildcard, on the other hand, yes, that exposure at a major would be great, but they're thinking a bit more... Uh, critically short term, I believe, in terms of the fact that they're in a serious state of relegation, right? They are right down the bottom um, in the overall standing so far of points secured in APAC South. And that's off the back of, you know, the tumultuous stage one where Salix had to jump in, stage two where things really didn't improve as much as they would have liked. And stage three is critical really for them to take that next big step. We know they have the players. They just got to put those pieces together. But at the moment, it's Chiefs who are the ones struggling. Two rounds in a row, they fall into wild card. They only dropped three rounds in their previous game on bank to wild card, and that was only a couple of days ago. So already wild card is stepping up massively, and Chiefs definitely struggling. At what point do we start to cause for concern? Located by attackers. Once again, two minutes passing in the action phase of round three, and the Chiefs now only slowly starting to ascertain map control. Fisher will repel in towards square and use an exothermic charge on the right-hand side wall. That will blow successfully. Keep in mind that he has the diffuser in hand. Pat in power position side of Janitor, flushed out by that grenade, but still alive. A little bit to work with. Finny with the prone angle can watch the repel in as the Chiefs start to prepare. I think they're trying to get that plant down and cover it on those repels, but they don't have a lot of time to work with. One small mistake or one big play from the defense could tear it apart. But they've got the info here. This could be the best chance for Chiefs to get into this game. Vinny has quite the angle here onto that breach. Oh, he sees oh. him! What a wall bang! Fish down on the ground. The diffuser cold and dead. Vinny has such an opportunity here to save this round for wild card. But Chiefs are in closing. It's all Vinny! One versus three. But there's just no chance that diffuser should be planted digital can shut him down. Chiefs finally make their way onto the scoreboard. A really good setup there from the Chiefs. A great shot in response there from Vinny through the prone hole. Um, a great flick for the, the ball bang head shot. Almost enough, almost enough to snatch that round away. But as I mentioned, the Chiefs on the rappel, they had those powerful crosses established. All they needed to be able to do was run across and secure that plant, which they managed to do so just in time. And of course, as Vinny tried to clutch up, there was nothing he could realistically do 
in that scenario. That's great news for the Chiefs. They prevent Wildcard from winning three sites in a row, which is always pretty important in these matchups. Um, that said, I mean, Wildcard are already flexing their muscles. They're going to go to their fourth unique site, the fourth available, being Staff and Open Area. Now, we did see them play this again in the previous matchup over in the Oceanic Nationals. A bit of innovation with the Maestro, for example, which they'll replicate here. Um, keen to see if it pays off once more. I love it when you get to see uh, full round the world, all four bomb sites on a map shown. Wildcard, like you said, flexing their muscles, flexing their depth. And at the moment, they are really looking well poised to, at the very least, show a much greater performance than they did against Chiefs. Yes, Chiefs have already found the first round, but I'm just going to keep going back to the fact that last time these teams played on this map, Wildcard only found three rounds. Chiefs found seven. And Wildcard is already two thirds of the way to matching that performance. We're only three rounds into this goddamn game. So Wildcard definitely the ones impressing me at the moment. And Chiefs need to make sure that they don't let any little mistakes go by in this attack half. Now Wildcard looking to lean a little bit into information denial here. They haven't brought the mute, but they have brought the mozzie in the hands of Geo. With those mozzie pests, you can place those around, particularly on this horizontal extension to try and make it a bit tougher for the Chiefs to get a read on exactly what the setup entails. And of course, Geo with the Roni in hand, that gun is just ridiculous. <laughs> so no doubt he'll be able to do quite a bit of damage as well. Now, in terms of the approach from the Chiefs, Fisho does have the diffuser over towards ATMs near the front door. That would suggest that they're not going to go above this time, maybe instead focus their efforts more so inside of, of towers. Um, there's just so many different routes you can take as the attack here. Um, Digital being up above though on that vert, I think is going to play a critical role Remember, back to round number one, Wildcard won those reverse peaks. It's up to Digital now to try and step up and get a couple in response here in round four. Here comes the hammer. Milo feels that pressure immediately. Out goes the C4 blind, no info, perhaps waiting for an audio cue as Digital continues to open up more and more vert. Getting awfully close to that C4, however, Needs to be awfully careful oh. there. Milo still hasn't blown oh. it! There it goes! The nuke takes Digital out of the server, sends him back to where he came from. My god, what a play by Milo. And now we get to see how much of the Chiefs' plan in this round hinged on Digital doing damage from above. Because that's two nades that can't be used to clear utility potentially on the walls, such as those Electro Claws, or, I mean, a whole host of other utility that's still available to the defense. How much is this going to change up their plan? Now, Worthy can still do quite a bit of remodeling with the Hard Breach and even Fisho to an extent with the Blowtorch, but I can't help but feel that's going to um, be a bit of a hindrance here for the Chiefs. We're going to have to see them quickly adapt, and Ethan, oh, thinks about going oh big. The back alley jump in the vault, but... He immediately backs off, trying to link up with the rest of his team, knowing that if he dies there and it's a three versus five, the Chiefs win, win chance goes down dramatically. There's just no way you could jump in that window and survive, not with the holes open at foot level like that. But Chiefs are looking for a Hail Mary 4v5 and still this roam not cleared out. That was Digital's job to use that vertical game and clear out Milo's position. But Wild kind of Milo and they've got so many other players, but wait a second. Chiefs have somehow managed to put themselves into a plant position. Pat denies that on sight, and my god, it's back and forth. Geo might be the difference maker here. Emo has some info on site, and Geo has this vertical potential. There is no way this plant gets secured. Wildcard with their third round manhandling the Chiefs. Yeah, Wildcard. They're doing a really good job. I can't think of a better way to describe it, but then making the objectives quite awkward to attack. Now, I don't know how much of that's off the back of the bank rework. The major change on that site being that the main big hatch right smack bang above open area has now just been completely removed, which does make it quite tricky for the attack to uh, clear out some of those positions below. But the extension from Wildcard, that huge C4 from Milo from down below just made things awkward and the Chiefs didn't quite adapt quickly enough or come up, formulate a plan that was effective enough um, in that 4v5 to be a decent chance in winning. Ethan, maybe if he had his time again, would have committed to that hero play, but I agree with you, Dev, probably wouldn't have paid off. And yeah, from there, 
Wildcard did a great job in reading into their opponents. The intel from the Maestro cam at the end, they're critical, and Geo was poised as always, able to go for that flank and get the kill. Down two rounds now, the Chiefs take their tactical time out. Definitely much needed. They need to get this momentum back on their side. No chance of winning this half outright. Best they can hope for is a 3-3 split. I feel like at this stage in the banked rework lifespan, it, it's got to favor the defense, right? Like all maps tend yep. to when they just enter with the exception of perhaps some really open and kind of aggressive maps like, you know, your chalets. But here on bank, we should definitely expect the defense to take a favorable half. So you don't want to pop the champagne just yet for wildcard. But I, I've got to admit, I'm sweating for cheese. Yeah, it, it's always so tricky in Siege, just the nature of the game and the fact there's quite a bit of downtime between rounds and whatnot. Getting a read on actual momentum is quite tricky, especially attack pauses and whatnot, breaking it up as well. Um, I do agree. We just have to be a little bit conserved in our assumptions here. I think it's safe to say, and I'll stand by what I said a little bit earlier, Wildcard are doing a great job in making these sites really awkward to attack and they're playing quite well. Will that necessarily translate when they're on the attack to be able to close out the map? Well, who knows? That's a long way down the road still. Um, I think at the, at the moment, the pass rate for the Chiefs, if they can get even one more attack on this half, decently successful. Um, I'll only really start to get worried for the Chiefs though if Wildcard actually get the next two rounds. A 5-1 lead would be monumental. Um, and if they have improved upon their attacks compared to that last game they played against one another, I think they'll be able to close it out. So it's, it has been a good start for Wildcard, but yeah, long, long way to go. At face value, it's just hard to imagine Wildcard finding a 5-1 lead, but <laughs> you look at, they've won three different bomb sites right now. They've only lost CEO Exec they don't actually have to play CEO exec again. You know, they could just play the three bomb sites they've won. To, uh, to go and tell his archives now, go lock his next round. And uh, hey, wildcard sitting pretty. But God Legion has found his way sneakily onto the main stairs with these lines of sight open. It could deal some damage to any unsuspecting wildcard player. Of course, this is a very aggressive position. He may well be punished. God Legion doing his best Nook cosplay at the moment, looking to sneak around and maybe find a kill. In fact, I'm surprised he didn't go Nook for this kind of playstyle. Would have been able to dodge that garage default and silence his footsteps, which is critically um, powerful in competitive when comms are often um, quite loud and difficult to hear the game at the best of times. So I don't know, maybe just feeling a little bit more comfortable on the Ash does have breaching charges if required or even Ash charges, but none of that will be applicable as Moloska finds the kill. I wonder whether what happened there is God Legion tried to swing into the hallway, take out the Mute Jammer. <laughs> if so, Milo definitely made him pay for it. Milo though might feel a bit of pressure in just a moment. Still Chief's trying to dismantle. Oh, Milo's got info. He's got so much knowledge of what's <laughs> happening in lobby. That's the dirty. intel is in abundance thanks to that hacked drone, the pested mozzie drone. And well, elsewhere, there's a bit of firearms going off, but Milo's been misdroned. No mm. way. Surely this doesn't work out for him. Oh, surely the drone saw him on the rerun there. Not entirely sure, but yes, yeah, so much info here. If the Chiefs commit to the West push, it is not going to work. The only thing working against them is that Wildcard don't have someone dead, but with Pat now down, he can sit the drones. So much free intel for Wildcard to work off here. Milo in a powerful position, oh. able to rotate there off the back of Vinny, giving a helping hand. This is being played so, so well by Wildcard. Bit more mobility now for Milo. Chiefs going to be really concerned with their chances now. They won't even know it. But that mozzie drone still is giving so much info to Wildcard. 30 seconds left. As Wildcard Pat. just hold on. And Pat is just in his element. He loves being in that leadership position. He can just sit back and give so many free calls to the rest of his team. Emerin's lighting them up. The Chiefs with 15 seconds left. I don't think it's going to work out for the attack. Surely this has got to be it, unless if Chiefs can pull the rabbit out of the hat here in the four on four. Emo goes aggressive, traded back. Three on three as Wildcard hold on. Chiefs, no sign of a plant anywhere in store. And that diffuser is cold on the ground. They all line up and Wildcard taking the four one lead over Chiefs. All right, this match is getting really, really exciting now. Wildcard for so damn long. We've just wanted them to play well because we know that they're such a great team and they have such a legacy. And again, maybe we're getting a little bit too excited because we still haven't seen them in the second half. But just that 
beautiful culmination of Milo on the mozzie with that drone and the rotation from Vinny to pop the hatch and just it all working together like this beautiful harmony it was just so great to see and it has felt like forever since we have seen that kind of coordination and team play really work out for wild cards so that has brought a, a small tear to my eye <laughs> uh that round was just beautiful to watch and uh Wow, um, the Chiefs have really got to start digging deep here. I didn't think this match would be as tricky for them as it has shown to be thus far. I don't think you're the only one with a tear in your eye. I wonder <laughs> if we get back to the desk where the Vast will be keeping it together. Not for the same reason, though. Quite the opposite. I'm sure it'd be quite painful watching his boys Hashtag struggling. Vast is the problem. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at the moment, I'm, I'm, I'm just making a joke here, so don't take whatever I say seriously. But hey, Ethan, one and four, maybe Vast got to give him a call, sub back in. <laughs> I mean, well, you know. I do want to mention that actually, right? Ethan, I could have sworn in that Oast game, he religiously he, he played did. the Jackal and he was yeah. roam clearing. He has not played Jackal once in this matchup. He didn't get target banned. Now, I don't know if the Chiefs are having necessarily big issues in locating roamers and cutting them off. Again, quite tricky to see that from our perspective. They'd have a better indication inside of the server, but it, honestly, it just felt like a conflict pick for him. And so far, he's not fragging out like he was in that match. He went 10-4. and four. He was by far and away the hottest player in the server and the most frequently in the kill feed for a good reason, at least. But we're seeing a lot of just good plays from Wildcard on the defense, and she's really struggling to contain. I think Milo from the previous round. A lot of these players have been lining up the scoreboard for a positive reason. Digital is really a linchpin play here as the vertical man for Chiefs. And he has been struggling somewhat on his role, but to round out the half here for Wildcard to keep that 5-1 dream alive, they go for lockers, but with this roam once again. Yeah, very similar roam. In fact, Vinny again posted up inside the stock, but just like last time, falls off pretty quickly. Collects a drone, leaving eight on the board for the Chiefs. Digital has to be a little bit careful, but ping goes out that Vinny has gone back down main stairs or retreated over towards that main stairs position at least by falling down the hatch. Can be cut off now, but Vinny looking to play a little bit more aggressive on this occasion. Milo supporting from the stairs, Geo inside of archives, might be able to even throw a nitro cell up and provide his own form of support. And I'm loving this from Wildcard. It's just really good intent. And they're not going outside of their comfort zone too much. They're not going too far and pushing the envelope. They are falling back when required. And I have no doubt Gio's going to be under the pump pretty soon. He's just going to drop down the hatch. That's exactly what happened the previous time. Wildcard defended this bomb site. I mean, look at the drones. Only six left now for the Chiefs. Especially considering they'll need those to dedicate to flank watch once they actually do take map control. Previously, Chiefs wasted two minutes. They got all five players back on the bomb site and or rather, Wildcard wasted two minutes, and Chiefs had no sign of looking like they could take that round. Looks like we may well see an almost exact repeat difference. Chiefs have some players up still. If Chiefs can punish these Wildcard roamers, maybe they can turn it round. Yeah, Geo got caught off there inside of Kitchen. Now, I don't know how Vinny is tracking at the moment. Oh, oh that's big onto Ethan. Wins that engagement. Four versus three wins another oh. onto Guard Legion. Vinny looking sharp. Fisho needs to try and find something back and does. 45 seconds left. Still achievable here for the Chiefs, but will be tough. Keep in mind, Pat Insight still has three gas babes available. Oh, the Chiefs no. will not be able to get the plant down. There is just no way a plant works out here. That's a nice bit of a nade, taking down that critical shield for Pat to play behind, but he's got so much cover here. There's no way Chiefs can get off a passive plant. Smokes aside, outnumbered, outgunned. It's going to be so difficult. Fish goes down. All on digital. Wildcard are looking like they are doing the impossible. A one versus three, an unenviable position for digital. And they are not giving him a thing. Wildcard almost fall to pieces, but digital, there is no chance he's making that dream work. Wildcard, a 5-1 defense half. 5-1? <laughs> I cannot believe it. That is just, that is ridiculous. Now, again, bank defense, half on as much as we want, but this is still incredibly impressive. When you look at the overall standings of Apex South, Wildcard are right down the bottom. The Chiefs, heading into the play day, were third. That shows us that there should be a pretty big discrepancy between these two teams. But Wildcard, even off the back of their defeat against the Chiefs last week or earlier in the week, whatever it was, on the same map, are bouncing back and looking to make 
a statement. Five rounds on the defense is really huge, and no matter the map, coming back from that kind of deficit is going to take a lot of grit and a lot of determination from the Chiefs. And it's not impossible by any stretch, especially looking at this basement defense site. Very, very favorable. Very, very strong here for Chiefs. But, uh, I mean, with Wildcard in their current form, in what they have displayed in the last six rounds, I, I just can't see Chiefs bring it back to take the full three points from this round of this match, which Chiefs will no long, no doubt be gunning for. Uh, they'll need to win every round from here. They can't drop a single more. And uh, it just seems so clear cut for me that Wildcard is at least getting one point out of this. More likely gonna find all three. Now, the thing I'm really interested to interrogate in this round is will the Jackal being brought here by Wildcard see a significant improvement in the ability to roam clear and gain critical map control quickly um, in tandem with the Lion as well and compared to what we saw from the Chiefs where they didn't lean into the Jackal once. I thought that surely sooner or later they were going to bring it out but seemingly didn't want to fit it into their comp and, you know, that's rightly so. Maybe that wasn't their game plan heading into this matchup but I'm keen to see the comparison. Milo's already picking up red pings almost catches a player going down the main stairs. That would have been absolutely devastating for the Chiefs. But as you can see, Wildcard already quickly gaining map control. The top floor already forfeited. And uh, if they can get the next floor quickly as well, then I would say they're probably beating the Chiefs in that regard. Imarin, a very dangerous Jackal player. Been on it for a long time. The C70 in his hands. Anything's possible, it seems. Wildcard a red hot riding this momentum. Chiefs are the ones that need to step up and they need to do it now. No doubt after Chiefs 7-3 wildcard in OCN on bank. It's wildcard who are the ones saying, all right guys, we need to go and watch that, watch that game, figure out everything that went wrong. Whereas for Chiefs, like, they, you know, oh, you know, pretty good game. You know, might learn a little bit from it, but they're not focusing on it, not like wildcard would have been. Slight change up here in defensive setup. That hatch needing to be popped open by Pat, as it has been both reinforced and electrified by the Kaid of Digital. That will slow down the clear here a little bit, but... Ooh. Oh, 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 wow, in fact, it's going to be impeded completely by Worthy. Nitro Cell to follow, trying to get that down. Oh, oh, doesn't finish, Pat, but manages to down Geo. Oh my uh, God. So I guess it's a bit of a case of two birds with one stone, or close enough, kind of weirdly. Geo, though, can be picked up. Pat, as well, surely will be too. Um, that is wasting more time, though, for Easily. Wildcard. Easily worth it. I mean, especially considering we still have one gas canister left from Fisho. That will shred through these two lit wildcard players. Does depend, though. Will Chiefs actually forfeit this control? Oh, my God. One bullet there would have been enough. The Nats, the headshot landing. Not even one of the lit players. And Worthy is worth his weight in gold. Ethan has found Vinny. Oh, my God. Chiefs have turned it up. Much like their counterparts, making the making the objective difficult to attack. Now the entirety of the roster needs to stack over towards top blue. Fisher is ready and waiting with open arms. Yeah, and this gas babe should be all that's required to take down a lot of these defenders. Thank My God, me. Pat, down to the tiniest smidge of health. Geo cannot march forward until that gas goes through. He does anyway. It's all Imarin, and he is gone. The 4K from Worthy. He is just unstoppable. Well played there by the Chiefs. They compose themselves off the back of a bit of a precarious first half to close out that round. Now, basement is probably the one objective of the four. I don't know if you would agree with me, Dev, but it's the one that you should probably be winning out the most, uh, particularly with this adaptation of the row, making time even more difficult to come by. Um, very, very tricky to attack at the moment. Um, and even, again, with that jackal and the line on the board, Wildcard finding things difficult. Maybe not necessarily on the room itself, but Worthy, again, in sight, going for such a heroic play underneath the hatch. Went for broke, managed to pull it off, and really gave his team the upper hand. Worthy, well, definitely one of those players to look out for. And when he's feeling it, when he's got some plays in his sights, my God, anything is possible. He's really had, just had a massive round then. It was going from 3-3 to 6-3. God Legion's also having a pretty ripper game. He's found three opening kills so far. But Milo on the other side has also found his stride as well. Three opening kills of his own. And uh, a smashing KD. Wildcard as a whole still retain that significant lead. But 
I think we can agree that Chiefs on the defense, they'll be far more comfortable. That said, they no longer have that strongest site as a backbone to lean on. They're going to have to show some depth here. And again, it was off the back. I would argue a lot of that round was where to go for such a huge play. Had he have not hit that shot or the nitro, who knows how that round would have shaped up. Likely Pat would have gotten that hatch open, more pressure in towards site. Would have been able to rotate for more of that default plan as well. Um, with quite a bit of time to spare. So, yeah, wouldn't be banking on that too much at the moment. I'm really keen to see, though, the Chiefs are proficient on some of these other objectives. Now, last time this map was played, Vinny went for this exact same repel. I reckon yeah. every single attack and on almost every occasion got a free pick. So if Chiefs let something leak here, oh, I'm, I'm going I'm to have to have a go for a break because it should not be happening. The Chiefs should have 100% be aware that Vinny is going to go for this repel and do not feed the man. He will not miss. Then he had the most opening picks in that match, and most of them were from those repels. <laughs> we should start calling that Vinny, just that repel. Uh, yep, that's it. Oh, well, Milo's going to punish the playmaker himself. Worthy goes down. Another opening pick here for Milo. Yeah, and that should open up the top floor a little bit here now for Wildcard. And again, with the Jackal available, Emo Rune can march forward, see if there's any footprints. If there are, scan them. If there isn't, well, hey, they know it's clear. Gold Legion is posing a little bit of a threat, but there we go. Scanned out beautifully by Emo. That will force him back down and mean that the top floor should be free for wild card. That means that the likes of Joe can come across. Now transitioning back towards that vert roll, which I know Vast was pleased to see um, compared to some of the roles we've seen on wild card as of recent. So he'll be nice and comfortable up above to work that floor, maybe find one more pick or at least dislodge this defense from the Chiefs a little bit more. Yeah, but working the floor is the pivotal point, isn't it? Geo's got to make sure he gets this hammer to work and he doesn't get c forward like we saw from Didge when Chiefs were doing their own attacks. Clearing out this bomb site with vertical control can be really, really easy or it can be really, really difficult. You think in theory that these gunfights go the way of the attackers, but anything can happen. Milo's the first one to fall. I believe that was through the vert as well. And Fish has doubled down. Now Wildcard is starting to slip away, but Emo manages to even it up. Located Lobby control, but the camera staring him down. Geo's got a drone up and he's got to find an opening for WC. A lot of utility available here for the XE. Three flashes, two smokes, two nades. So Wildcard, no shortage to work with here. I guess on the flip side, though, the Chiefs, two Nitro cells as well to deny. But with that vert up above, the likes of Digital being very, very careful that they don't get picked off. 30 seconds to go. What will Wildcard go for? Calm before the storm. When will the execute take place? Ethan's going for a flank. It may be too late, but he might actually have the timing. He might have the shot. There's just not enough bullets in the Roni. Surely Geo can't lose it now. And Pat's gone down. The execute falling apart. And how does Ethan win that? Emo all alone. Chiefs can clean up. And a round that looked to ramp up and eventually fizzle out does get Chiefs one step closer. Wildcard had a 5-1 defense half, but Chiefs have been flawless on Yeah, both teams are doing a great job in playing really, really well late round and making these plants and these entries in towards the objective. Super duper tricky. Great work there from Ethan up top um, on that flank. I believe it was Ethan, yeah? Yep. Yeah, not only did he get the kill, but <laughs> just the amount of time he was able to waste in that sort of strange engagement meant that Geo up above couldn't hold the vert. He couldn't sweep in late from archives and clean up the rest of the defense. They were trying to deny that plant. So um, that, that was really, really well played and a critical engagement to be one out. The Chiefs really showing their medal here, but they do need to win three sites to avoid their opponents gaining match point. As we often say in Apex South, every single point matters and denying match point from your opponents is really, really critical. That's it, especially because it does keep the, the three points on the cards, on the table for Chiefs. Mm -hmm. And I said it was looking unlikely. I don't know, like at this point, I'm actually, I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit of faith. You know, once it hits four or five, I'd, I'd be a little bit more confident, especially because that would mean that Chiefs have made a full rotation of all the three bomb sites they would need to defend and demonstrate that they can indeed defend them successfully. Wildcard, I feel aren't playing terribly on their attack either. Like this isn't, I don't think a, a case of uh, 
these teams are playing badly, which is why the other team is, is winning rounds. I actually think both these teams are playing pretty well. Like, yeah, Chiefs didn't have as much teeth on their attacks as they did the other day. But, oh, this has been so good from both. Doesn't even what is need the angle? Power. Let's go. He really doesn't. And that's worthy shut down again. One of the big hitters for Chiefs off the, oh, out of the game. Yeah, that, that, that's really, really huge. And it's a bit of pressure now alleviated for the attack. But it seems like a lot of these issues from both teams are really coming in the last sort of 30 seconds. Gaining that objective control, even just getting entrance in towards the objective and trying to commit to a plant, proving to be really, really tough. So for wildcard now, they need to try and quickly take map control. If they could find another quick pick on Vert, for example, that would be absolutely huge. Lend themselves nicely into the rest of the round to try and convert it because that said conversion has been really, really challenging. Now, I don't think anyone is roaming above, so that should mean that wildcard can take this nice and quickly. In fact, we're going to see a quick entry in towards Ooh. lobby and up banana. Bit risky there. Gio was exposed, I believe, to uh, the teller's door. Maybe it was castled up. Maybe he felt safe. Like you said, the top floor is clear, but we've seen vertical play hasn't been very favorable to the attackers so far. So even if Gio gets in, starts opening up the floor, as he will now, Ethan's got a C4 pre-ripped. Is this going to be a repeat? Almost the C4 in the exact same position. Is he going to blow it straight away? He does, and nothing is found. So that's a win for Wildcard. Yeah, for sure. Allows Gio to keep working up above. Two nades in hand can clear out some of that utility placed in towards site. Like those Maestro Evil Eyes. All those were my Banshees from Ethan. You can see, though, the Chiefs, they're not really wanting to contest it, not playing into it. Instead, falling back on the extension. Maybe they'll even think about retaking side or, again, focus their efforts on preventing any boots on the ground inside that objective. I mean, look how deep... The Chiefs are playing away from where this vert's being established. Keep in mind, it is an open area defense. All the vert really being focused in up above archives, for example. No one's really playing there at the moment. Wildcard needs to get some pedal to the metal. 35 seconds left. How are they going to get in towards this objective and get that diffuser on the ground? Well, there's a rotate into admin, but you can't plant an admin. They need to get a breach here on the staff room wall where digital is standing. That will rip the site wide open. But Pat! He's the one to go down. God, Legion was hiding an electrical traded Ooh. back. That's something. Attack but Vinny is all out point. of hard breach. And that strike. means that Wildcard may well be all out of hope. It looks like Chiefs will just have to hold down the left click as Wildcard walk into the meat oh, grinder. No. But they find the picks out of nowhere. Ethan runs over and oh, draws the diffuser. Ethan clutches against his former team. Keeping the three-point dream alive for Chiefs. Devastating for Wildcard. The Banshee there was enough to slow down that player. And of course, the one player that wasn't protected inside the objective behind the reinforced fall was the player with the diffuser. Oh, you could not script that any better for the Chiefs. What a play by Ethan coming up clutch there. He didn't have an nitro. He couldn't deny the plant that way instead committed himself to finding that kill and he was just lucky enough the one out of three chance went his way well played by the chiefs that's three sites straight now and this matchup now is looking as close as it ever has and now wildcard take their tactical time out it is all theirs for the taking one more round they guarantee at least overtime and the one point that comes with it. But Chiefs are hot on their heels three rounds in a row and ready to take it even when it gets close, even when it takes a miracle play from Ethan or Worthy. Chiefs are ready to step up. Yeah, this... this I don't know if I'm looking back at the last time they played on this map recently and uh, just not remembering it correctly, but so far this match has, for me at least, been just so much more enjoyable to watch. It feels like they've really stepped up their game in that short period of time. Really good counterplay from both teams. We're seeing extensions on defense. We're seeing roam clears from the attack, um, which, you know, is a sign that both of these teams are uh, slowly improving here. And yeah, it's been a pleasure to watch some really great plays from some of the star players in the server. Ethan, of course, one of said players Defenders just showing such bomb. great composure there to win out that round at wildcard they will be absolutely seething that round didn't go their way they did so much hard work when it was that three versus three they traded out the site you were shocked dev i was shocked i was like <laughs> how the hell have they turned this around and they're just out of nowhere it was like taking a lollipop out of a kid's hand it was like 
No. Yeah, I mean, it was just so unfair. As soon as Pat went down and I saw Vidi had no hard breach, he was like, all right, yeah, that, that's the round, right? Like, that's over. And then Wildcard finds a bunch of picks on site. I actually kind of had to blink, rub my eyes, and take another look at how many players were alive for Chief. Saw that it was a 1v3 <laughs> and that Ethan was so far off site he could barely see them. Uh, and then that miracle happened. Chiefs have been counting their lucky stars that uh, they aligned for that to happen, but they can't just rely on luck and a bit of uh, good play. They need to really dig their heels in because I think after a moment like that, that's when it starts to hit the wild card mental. And that means that wild card are going to be fighting harder than ever. Yeah, that's uh, arguably almost two rounds now. We had the basement defense where Worthy popped off and found that kill bar. on to Pat on the Maverick above. And now that play. So both of those do have potential to chalk the mental of wild card. So it is important that they just continue to stay focused. I still think they're playing some really great siege, particularly for the kind of expectations that we do have on wild card themselves at the moment. They are playing really really well this has been a hard fought match and unfortunately for them just a couple of things not quite going their way now of course you can make the argument that in siege in particular you make your own luck to some degree but yeah it is important that they just block out those rounds um you, you hopefully they use that tactical timeout to just reset and really establish a solid plan to win this round this is again a really important round i mean they all have been in this second half they are looking to try and get match point in doing so, you're at least going to force OT and at least claim one point. Again, every single point is so critical. There's no doubt that Chiefs have proven to be the better team in recent history, but I feel like Wildcard today have looked like the better squad. Chiefs, though, are known for having incredibly stable mental fortitude across these long games. Wildcard these days can't boast that so much, so it may well come down to that. If Wildcard start to chalk some of these rounds, then Perhaps the game could be won in the mind. As at the moment, Chiefs are not giving Wildcard any opportunity to get a man advantage. Sight being droned out. Feels like time has been in fast forward. Only a minute left. Wildcard will be looking soon to get control of the square. Pat accelerates that process by opening, or at least attempting to open that northern wall. Milo shoots the jammer off on that rappel, allowing it now to be open. Lines of sight in towards Janitor means that Pat now needs to be careful in the cross-covered onset rappel. That's taking 20 seconds, leaving 40 left in the bank here for the attack. The diffuser is in the hands of Pat. He's considering a plant quite soon. Emo Rin finds a very, very nice nade there onto Fisher, opening up that Jan position. And sooner rather than later, Wildcard will be looking to get that plant down and again cover it on that cross. This is starting to slip away once again now for Chiefs. 18 seconds. But Ethan does have the FMG in his hands and he has some gas as well. He's going to have to be the playmaker. Oh. He does deny that diffuser, but he's the last oh. man standing. 1v2! Ethan! Emo clutches it! Wild card match points! <laughs> oh, he was that close. And Emo Rid, amidst all that chaos, decided to go for the plant, man! Oh, he would have been reaping if he lost the round because they tried to go for that plant. Ethan had him in his line of sight, and then Milo threw the body at the perfect opportunity there for Wildcard to be able to win that round. That was so incredibly close. If Wildcard lose that round off the back of that, they are gone. There is no recovering from that. So well clutched in the end. So much experience on the shoulders there of Emo Rin. He shows it when it counts. And a big storyline out of that, wild card. The struggling wild card of 2021 have found a match point. Against Chiefs, against their former star player of Ethan. In fact, it was two old teammates who have seen everything together. Six Invitational Tokaname Finals, Ethan versus Emo Rin. Nerves of steel on Emo. One of the most experienced players in the Oceanic region. He clutches it when it is needed. Wildcard find their first points of APAC South Stage 3. They're currently trying to stave off relegations. And this is exactly what they need. A pivotal and much needed win against Chiefs right here. They have the match point. They have a buffer of two rounds as well to lock it in for the full three points.
Now, one win in isolation, three points for Wildcard, isn't necessarily going to be enough to uh, uh, prevent them from making relegations by any stretch. In fact, it's only actually going to get them even on order at the bottom of the standings on 19 points. However, it is still really important that they don't uh, let that gap expand too much above them and actually give themselves any sort of chance to avoid the bot three. So, yeah, big, big game for Wildcard. A big, big stage for Wildcard as well. So this is a critical matchup and they have a great opportunity to beat the Chiefs. Oh, oh Maloska doesn't drop to that Nitro cell. That's critical. He can play pretty passive now. Sit back and let those EU1Ds track the remaining defenders moving around. As long as he can still press that gacha button, I mean, he can have some pretty <laughs> significant value. That is the nature of Lion. Wildcard slowly making their map control. As this is lockers and CCTV defense for the Chiefs all the way downstairs. They have a blue hold with Fisho on the main blue server stairs. With shotgun and shield to protect him. At the moment for Wildcard, it's just about taking the full map. Pat clearly has <laughs> helped his teammates do so because he's just going to run in willy-nilly, open up the server hatch. The idea you want to open, or rather open up the side hatch, you want to open up that A side hatch before you start flushing out server because then you'll get free picks as people try and rotate back to site. So I think that's a good play here from Wildcard. Now they turn their attention to this blue hold. I'm interested to know where those Electro Claws were used by Digital. Clearly not on the hatches that Pat was able to open up. I think maybe one was used on Blue Hatch, and the blue extension here from Fisher Guy would back that up. It means that he can play this, rotate back down, and not be cut off from up above. Needs to be mindful of these flash grenades, dodges both of them. However, looking oh to God. hold on here. No smoke babes left for the plant, though. Oh, a little bit of damage. Any more flashes from Wildcard? Might be the end of him. He can't any longer rely. Oh, oh my god, there it comes Perfect. for White and oh. the peak wild card. Take the two man advantage. And on the back of it, the lion roars. Five versus three for WC. Now they can think about the plant. Server default being opened up. Digital in the best position on the long angle to deny this. Keep in mind, smoke dead. No smoke babes available. Only one nitro oh. cell near the site. And Digital oh. misses the critical shot. Ethan follows it up with the nitro, but it doesn't hit the mark, leaving 20 seconds left for Wildcard oh. to recompose. And here comes the plant. There's no way Digital can deny this with the line of sight. He's trying his best. His C4 is not close enough, but Ethan can even the numbers. And God Legion as well. Suddenly, while the plant is down on the ground, there's a chance here for Chiefs. Geo and Pat on this post plant, but it's going to be incredibly difficult to hold. God Legion all the way on the top floor, caught out by Pat. And here it is on match point digital. We'll need to clutch the one versus two to save the map, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Wildcard may have overcome the ultimate adversity in the middle of their rut, but they do it. Digital taken out, wild card. They get their first win in APAC South for stage three. And what an incredible performance, a 7-4 victory and two fantastic attacks to round it off. They can hold their heads high. This is a big win for wild card. They have gone through such a rough year and yes it's only one match but it is a big one at that what a killer performance by wildcard against ethan the former star player what a boost of confidence that must be to the boys it has been a hell of a long road for these guys, they were undoubtedly the number one team in Oceania last year, but times have changed. They lost Diesel, and it didn't look like there was anyone or anything that could fill that hole. All kinds of roster changes within their support staff have occurred as of recent times, and it looks like we're finally starting to see the hard work pay off. What a massive win over the Chiefs. Yeah, it was just so, it was just such a fun game to watch. Honestly, like heading into this one, they're both those teams. I didn't necessarily have any biases to who was going to win, but I was just 
grinning the entire time. We saw such great plays from standout players on both squads. Um, I think Wildcard really do deserve this victory. It was one of those matches where, from at least our perspective, I believe it was Wildcard outplaying their opponents. It wasn't necessarily the Chiefs completely capitulating. I thought they played quite solid for the most part. So, really well done by Wildcard. I know they've won games in isolation here and there in previous stages, and we always have that same one-liner. They need to build upon this and build some momentum. Could this be the stage where they finally actually do that? It's a winning streak now starting to develop for Wildcard. They had a 7-2 over order in OCN. Now they've taken down the Chiefs in a stunning revenge match. Uh, what is next for them? We can only guess. I'm sure that there'll be a, a very ecstatic Vince here on the line for this interview, but we'll toss it back to the desk to break that one down. And hopefully Vars isn't too upset by that result. <laughs> Yeah, no promises. I could hear him furiously slamming his desk <laughs> oh, hey guys. Uh, in the in the green room while we were watching that last couple of rounds. But look, I, I think uh, that's incredible signs for wildcard Vars. You know, I'll, I'll give to you because I don't want you to be negative about Chiefs. I want you to give me positives about wildcard here. How how are we feeling about this roster now? That's a that's an incredible performance. No, I I agree. Honestly, I agree with what Guz said. They honestly just outplayed the Chiefs. It wasn't necessary. I'm sure Chiefs will you know, feel like they didn't have a, you know, a good day. They probably feel like they've lost to themselves. At uh -huh. the end of the day, I still think Wildcard um, still, you know, kind of outplay them in many ways of the game. And I think, yep. yeah, this is really a, a really good positive for Wildcard. Um, it's too early right now to say whether they are informed, but if they keep uh, showing consistency like that, then they'll definitely be on their way to finding um, their form. Look, they're one step closer to finding that, but we're one step closer to bringing Vinny in. Of course, we've got the big smiling Vincere as ever. <laughs> there it is. It's always great to see you, mate. Uh, look, what a performance. That is a huge result. How's the team feeling after that one, even though we've kind of snatched you out of the service straight away? <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't get to hear Rousey's little final comments. They're usually pretty good, but... Um... You know, I get yeah. to do these interviews when we win, which is always good. Um, and yeah, I don't know, ecstatic. It's uh, a really proud feeling for the boys. And, um, you know, we work really hard to, to get results like this. And I think it shows. Yeah, look, it was a really strong win from you guys tonight. It wasn't just like, you know, falling over the line or anything like that. It was actually a really good performance from you guys. Um, I want to ask a question about Bank. Now, you played Chiefs on Bank in OCN. Uh, it was very unfavorable for you guys. In fact, you kind of got a bit demolished on it. Um, was there rationale with going back to bank again tonight? Um, well, we, we kind of reviewed that OCN match and, uh, you know, we saw that there weren't as many issues as the score probably showed. I think I think a lot of the rounds were closer than um, the final scoreline ended up uh, kind of showing. But uh, we knew that there were some things we needed to fix. We knew if we fixed a few of those things and, um, you know, played our best game, then we will we'll go over the top of them. So um, it was just about fixing those little things. Uh, it does help that we, we get the VOD back against them and, um, you know, we, we got to see a few of their little quirks and their little um, patterns and that, that helped us as well. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a really good kind of stepping stone for you guys. Um, you know, it, it's important to get these wins because it can really help you out of you know, those routes and breaking those plateaus. Um, I think I just want to kind of, my question would be is, um, you know, through your process of the last couple of weeks of um, really trying to learn from some of your losses, have you guys maybe found kind of the recipe to, si not success, but maybe the recipe to kind of break you out of this plateau? Yeah, I think it's it's just really important that when you when you lose matches that you're reviewing it honestly and you're like holding each other accountable for um for the mistakes that were made. Um, it wasn't always strategical reasons that we lost. Sometimes it was just the, the way that we played on the day, and um, yeah, it, it was really just about playing with each other, making sure that we we're um you know really working on those on those team building kind of things and um, yeah, just holding each other accountable. If people make mistakes, then you know it's it's okay, but we need to make sure that we're fixing those things. And um, yeah, that's all it is. Vinny, what's the morale like before we let you go? What's the morale like uh, in the camp right now? It's only building, man. I don't know. Every time we get one of these wins, especially something like this, it's uh, it's only making us more confident in our ability. And, and we know that we can play good stage. It's just about putting some results together. Mm. And uh, this is just the beginning. Well, that's a scary prospect for all of us, including the teams watching. Uh, any final words before we let you go, mate? 
same as always thanks for the fans uh we we really want to keep getting results like this and uh yeah we hope to keep doing it this week no doubt you will maybe we'll see you again next thursday or even look hell maybe tomorrow night on ocn by the way ocn plug uh make sure you watch uh, the boys <laughs> might be back in form but Vinny, thanks for joining us mate we might see you tomorrow thank you guys see you then fantastic result for a fantastic team that may well be able to turn around their 2021 campaign here raven do we feel like it's in the blood it, it, the smile on Vinny's face is so deceiving sometimes it's i i just i think he's always a happy bloke but this time it kind of there feels like a little bit of substance behind this one yeah i mean it does a little bit but i feel like we've been in this position over the past few months where wildcard get a decent victory and we're kind of like mm. yeah here we go like this is the role but <laughs> It's just kind of like a false start. So I don't know, I feel like I don't want to celebrate yet in terms of like them coming back to form until we start to see it strung together. Yeah. Um, but look, I think it was definitely a really great win from them. Um, there was definitely a lot of opportunities for them to have an even stronger scoreline in this instance, quite honestly. Mm. So uh, it's one great result. Hopefully it can be, you know, the kickstart to something great for stage three. Yeah, journey of a thousand steps start with one little step. But that is going to do us for that matchup. We have an absolute banger coming up for you after the break. It's night and nights and IG don't go anywhere.